So, are you all set? Ready to start investigating? Sure. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Great! Then let's go! I've delivered packages all over, but I've never seen a mysterious fairy tale world like this before. Looks like nobody has gotten around to repairing this house yet. Ugh, even I wouldn't dare to sleep in there. It might suddenly collapse in on you. Nothing to see here either. Maybe we can find someone to ask? Aha! Uh -huh. Over there! I bet we'll find some people there. Let's go take a look! Uh-huh. I was sure there'd be people here. There once was a goddess who ruled over fate. Before she died, she left three riddles for the kingdom she had created. What? Who said that? Long story short, on this day, a sentient feline, an outlander, and a uh, diminutive pixie arrived on the scene. They saw a narrow path off to the side. Okay, but which side? Yeah, if you gave ambiguous instructions like that to a Comania Express courier, they'd give you the parcel right back and tell you to write the delivery address more clearly. Despite how obvious the answer was, the perplexed pixie and the flummoxed feline struggled to work it out. Hmm. Although, perhaps a small part of the blame could be attributed to my dull narration. All right, let's uh, try this again. <clears throat> the path on the left-hand side seemed to give off an enticing fragrance, as if to say, uh, this is the way to wealth and glory. Ooh, that sounds like the start of a good story. Then what? Then what? At the end of the path, the motley crew would soon spot a secret stone room. A prophecy had once foretold of a marquee who shall one day venture inside, and thus it is named the Future Marquis Abode to Be. You like it? The future marquee's about to be? Got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Uh, are you sure you don't want to hear the rest? I'll keep this brief. Firstly, the place ahead of you is a secret room whose purpose, per the legends, is to await the arrival of a certain marquee. For that reason, it's called the future marquee's about to be. Uh, secondly, when you get inside, don't sit on the chair in the centre, or bad things will happen. There, that's all. Off you go. <clears throat> so many summers, winters, springs and falls, and now at last a hero hither strides. Israel knows not what lies beyond its walls. Its secrets mystify the world outside. Wait, new voices. Who are they? With wood and earthenware strewn all around, the demon feline's fury can't be quelled, reducing them to rubble on the ground. She finds the vessels vacant save for... uh... air? She finds long gone the chins that once they held. Are they describing how we broke the boxes and jars? Who are you calling demon feline? As golden sunlight fills the firmament, the tabletop engrosses your attempt. Perhaps perchance peruse these pages thence. They surely represent no ill intent. Why isn't he reading the files on the desk? Hey, Boberano, maybe quit showing off and try using words he'll actually understand. I can either rhyme like a bard, or I can curse like a sailor. And right now, Cafe, you are seriously tempting me towards the ladder! Um, Cafe, forgive me for breaking the rhyme scheme for a second, but I want to hear your take on this. So any outsider who comes in here would surely see the documents on the table, right? Unless he was visually impaired. And unless he's got tinnitus or something, he'd definitely have heard what we were saying. All I'm trying to say is, if this poor person can't see or hear properly, I just feel kind of sorry for them. Oh, we hear you loud and clear, so watch it!
Go. The weary foes falter in their quest For home they long, for friend and kin they yearn These thoughts in mind they pause and seem it best To cease this foolish errand and return Hey, rhyme time's over. They're already gone. Aha, uh -huh, they're back. Seems our outlanders pine for the desktop documents after all. Technically, when you get inside, don't see how much you're Stop the poem. We have a situation. Someone's up with this person. Traveler? Uh, are you all right? Come on, you can do it! This can't be how our story ends! Can I give you a hand, or a tail, even? Captivated by the epic poetry, and enthralled by the outstanding storytelling, the Outlanders knew what their next objective was. Namely, to remove the clockwork key from the raised platform up ahead. Cabe, I just realized you said we all had to speak like bards, but every time you open up your mouth, I don't hear any rhymes. Yeah, I noticed that too. It's one standard for us and another for you. That's not fair, Cabe. Uh, perhaps the Outlanders are worried that something drastic will happen the moment they remove it. Maybe that's why they're investigating the area thoroughly first. Can't fault them for that. I'm wondering if we can take advantage of this downtime to discuss whether we really need to keep this up. Oh, if you guys don't want to put on a voice and speak in verse, be my guest. Just don't blame me for your own poetic incompetence. Cafe's blatant unprofessionalism and the lackluster performance began to annoy the outsiders. He decided to step out to get some air and come back with a change of attitude. Oh, get off my case! A sense of longing wells up in the chest, and to one's heart one always must be true. Resume you must your once forsaken quest, and persevere until you see it through. Finally, the Outlander returned to the sacred clockwork key of destiny. My, my gosh! gosh. A, a poem, poem from, from Cafe! Cafe. I, I can't, can't believe, believe my ears! With wood and earthenware strewn all around, the demon feline's fury can't be quelled, reducing them to rubble on the ground. Uh, no, no you don't. I wrote that line. Don't start plagiarizing me just because you can't take a bit of criticism. Look, let's not put form over content here. It's not about the rhymes. It's about making sure the Outlanders focus on the clockwork key on that platform. I told you already. Stop calling me Demon Feline. As the Outlander stands before the clockwork key, they're overcome by a sudden urge to set it free. Also, Cafe, that'll be my last rhyming line. I'm not writing any more poetry until you apologize. Uh, what does it matter anyway? I've lost count of how many people have tried this before. No one's getting that key out. Strong as stone, firm as steel, the Outlander pulls, but it does not yield. This has happened many times before, but this time is different. A thought enters the Outlander's mind. Attack! Attack! First to weaken the structure, then seize the treasure! The Outlander's comrades urge him on. Keep up the attack! Don't give up halfway! Uh... We didn't want to interrupt because listening to you guys... Uh... Perhaps the Outlanders are worried that something drastic will happen the moment they remove it. Maybe that's why they're investigating the area thoroughly first. Can't fault them for that. I'm wondering if we can take advantage of this downtime to discuss whether we really need to keep this up. Oh, if you guys don't want to put on a voice and speak in verse, be my guest. Just don't blame me for your own poetic incompetence. Yeah. Yeah. The 
attack now over. Only one final step remains. Now it is the time to seize the key. Yes! Finally! Come on, move your butts and your lights, assuming they're still in working order. It's showtime! No hard feelings about your lack of poetic contributions? Oh, let it go! Ah! Welcome, esteemed and noble outlander. Allow us to introduce ourselves. We represent the three great clans of this realm, having been selected as its authorized historical supervisors. Our purpose being to await the arrival of one such as yourselves who shall remove the clockwork key. My name is... You're Cape, he's Albizzi, and that's Boborano, right? You've done so much talking that we can already tell you apart by your voices. Aren't we missing someone, though? The guy who led us here to begin with? Who? <clears throat> and thus was born the long-awaited fellowship, destined to uncover the truth of the past. Allow me to quote, if I may, in the history of Constellation Metropole, a new page has begun. Him. Well, there's no fourth person, so which of you is the ventriloquist? Come on, out with it. We've never heard that voice before. But he sounds like he'd be good at reading bedtime stories to children. Well, whoever it is, I don't know and I don't care. Forget about him. We have far more important things to focus on. Like, where our journey goes from here. That key you hold is the pivot point about which the past and present of the Metropole revolve. However, between our three clans, there is some... dispute over the historical record. Each clan has its own version of history detailing the clan's origins and the tale of the dragon of old, and unfortunately, we don't know which one is the truth. Dragon? You mean the one that's been acting up recently? Oh, no, 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 not that one, you adorable little pixie. When I say dragon of old... <laughs> he means a dragon that would be really, really old if it was still with us today, but it was defeated in ancient times. The new one has nothing to do with our clan history. Uh... Was that supposed to be a joke? <clears throat> uh, anyway, so you've been waiting for someone to remove the key so you can finally explore the truth of the past? Not just explore it, but argue incessantly about it. Honestly, I don't care that much. Cape's the one who's always bothering us about it. What we need to figure out is who resolved the dragon crisis. We have to know that before we can decide which is the Supreme Clan. The moment you removed the key from where it was lodged, you became the Honorary Marquis. We humbly beseech you, noble outlander. Noble Traveler Marquis, we ask you to help us. You and your... your talking Puss in Boots and the pale floating pixie. Puss in Boots? Are you serious? It's better than Demon Feline, but still... Embrace it, my friend, embrace it! Most cats don't wear boots or speak, do they? I'm not even a cat, I'm a Nekomata! Now that you know the word, I expect you to use it. Please allow me to lead you all to a sacred memorial site. It will be much easier to explain what needs to be done once we are there. This place is sacred to my clan. It's where our brave forefathers once took up arms against the dragon of old. After a bitter battle that dragged on for many days and nights, finally, our forefathers fought the dragon into submission, and it fled. They took turns, though. Some forefathers worked the day shift, while others worked the night shift. So they say, it's just a legend, though. Wait a second? Did I just hear you admit that your clan's history is just a legend? A history, legend, who cares? My clan was definitely courageous, that's the point. That's the truth. And isn't the truth what we've all been arguing about non-stop for all these years? Cape's words gave the Traveler food for thought. Could it be that the truth in a fictional world is equivalent to fiction in the real world? But that would have to wait. Apparently, Cape was not alone in his pilgrimage to this sacred site. 
unwanted company had arrived. The traveller and the talking cat, <coughs> Nekomata, decided to teach them some manners. Wow. A true display of heroism and valor. It was as if the spirits of my ancestors were fighting for me. Who's a thought? He'd be wrong. But maybe the Traveler Marquis is a lot more powerful than your ex. Your martial prowess and show of courage are a more vivid reenactment of my ancestors' feats that suit the modern aesthetic. Now, let's get down to business. As we all know, time is but an illusion. Time may flow line by line, page by page, or frame by frame, but usually it flows in the form of springs and gears. And that clockwork key you have in your hand can turn back time and make the past reappear. Well, actually, my view is that the illusion of time is more of a problem of consciousness. Gears power the body while the body is the vessel of the conscious mind. But the mind cannot understand the dimension of time, so we experience instead an endless continuum of moments as the pinion of now turns along the rack of ages. I... I'm getting flashbacks to when I was delivering packages to the Sumeru Academia. A teacher once asked Albizzi what his greatest fear was, and he replied, dragons. Boberano was asked the same question. He replied, time, and repeated the argument we just heard. The teacher then turned to Cape and posed the same question. He replied, Boberano. The manuscript that tells the truth of the historical record, the blueprint to all of creation, the work of the great mage themselves, it can be found at the beginning of the gear rack and on the very first page of the book. Paimon didn't follow all that, but basically, you're just saying that we need to put the key in and turn it all the way back? Exactly. It is said that in the beginning, the goddess of creation took the goddess of fate's manuscript as a blueprint, placed it under the goddess of prophecy's starry realm, and generated the world from a few magic arrays. So in a few moments, when the great clockwork key turns the local time here back to the very beginning, we will restore the magic arrays back to their original configurations. Hold on, isn't stealing part of the blueprint of creation a little dangerous? Also, how are we supposed to know the original configurations of the magic arrays? Uh, uh, well, the general shapes of the configurations have been passed down over the ages. They now form the family crests of each of our clans. So you'll just need to reference my family crest and join the dots accordingly. To address your other concern, when the house has already been built, do you really think that taking away the construction crew and blueprint will cause it to collapse? The Traveler Marquis prepares to insert the Great Clockwork Key into the nearby keyhole. I guess we should start here? Behold, the sacred writings that record the truth of... No, wait. That have shaped the truth of history. Gather round and let us bear witness. Feast your eyes, rejoice, and cheer, for this is the unquestionable truth. Look at the signature. Nobody is capable of forging that. I don't believe it. So, all along, our histories have been false? Don't lose heart, Albizzi. It does not follow from his is true that ours are false. <sighs> that might be the most bogus logic I've ever heard. But keep up the mental gymnastics, Boberano. Been waiting for that look of jealousy on your face my whole life, and I'm gonna savor it. And yet, it seemed that this conundrum could indeed have more than one solution. Everyone agreed that there may be more than one truth. 
The party decided to visit the sacred sites of the other clans and see what their documents had to say. Isn't a narrator supposed to remain detached and objective? It feels like you're forcing a narrative agenda on us here. Well, whatever. I'm in a good mood. Let's do it. The instructions say to repeat the process three times, and besides, I'm looking forward to watching you both be sorely disappointed. Let's do my clan next. I'll lead the way. Hmm, the party finds no pedestal in which to place the great clockwork key. Only a locked door. Where's your clan's pedestal? Oh, let me guess, you hid it away in advance to save yourself the embarrassment of having it exposed as a fake? You done? Okay. Now, since my clan's main claim to fame is... <laughs> Misinformation, half-truths, and fabrication. Ah, shut up, Cape! Shut, shut up, Cape! I swear, if I wind up dead one day, the murderer was Bo Barano. Let those be my last words. <clears throat> My clan's claim to fame is that we outwitted the dragon of old and stole its treasure. Ergo, all articles of value that we own, including the pedestal for the clockwork key, lie behind that door. So, next step is open the door? Almost. There's one step before that. The door is protected by a smart interrogation system. We have to answer its questions, and if we get them wrong, we will alert law enforcement. Jeez! Well, do you at least know the answers? The correction fluid of time has dyed white the pages of the Book of Wisdom. Uh, no. No, I don't know the answers. But worry not! I had a quick word with the constabulary in advance. They'll ignore the alarm if we get the questions wrong, so answer without fear! Question one. Who is it? That's actually quite an amusing approach. It's probably not going to get us anywhere, but I do admire your sense of humor and your uh, commitment to it. Question one. Who is it? Ah, what an ingenious idea. Far more intelligent than Boberano's ancestors. But I still recommend against this answer. Question one. Who is it? The great yokai, Nekomata in boots. And the trusty travel guide, Pixie. A uh, travel guide. Trusty travel guide. Question two. By which virtue did the ancients defeat the dragon? No, oh, no, 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 don't say that. Even though the writings you saw do prove that bravery has its uses. Uh, you do realize we can hear everything you're saying, right? If you say it out loud, you'll only set those three off arguing again. Thinking it is fine, but please promise me you won't say it. Question two. By which virtue did the ancients defeat the dragon? To be completely honest, hard work is a bit of an alien concept to us here in the Constellation Metropole. We have hardware, and we have clockwork, but not hard work. Question two. By which virtue did the ancients defeat the dragon? If this is the right answer, I swear I'll... Correct! What? Ugh. A barefaced lie. So low. Question three. Which is more real, the fiction of the outside world, or the truth of this world? Come on, you'll have to do better than that, kid. I mean, Traveller Marquis. You and your friends are the only ones who know the truth about us. Question three. Which is more real, the fiction of the outside world, or the truth of this world? Please try to avoid being unnecessarily cruel in your response. Question three. Which is more real, the fiction of the outside world or the truth of this world? Hear, 
here? Who can be sure that the outside world isn't just a dream? And that when the dreamer wakes up, they won't just find themselves inside a novel? There is no way to know, therefore both are equally real. All correct. You may have the key pedestal. Traveler Marquis, you know what must be done. Please insert the great clockwork key. Oh, and uh, this is my family crest. Hmm. Do we really need this one? Now, let me see what... What elaborate fiction the Clan of Wisdom was able to conjure up. If anyone's listening, I would like to submit these as my last words. I surrender. I'm the one who murdered Cappy. There's that same unforgeable signature again, right here! What? Oh, does this mean that my clan is the only odd one out? Given that my clan's wisdom is such a subject of ridicule in your eyes, I will now appeal to my own personal intelligence, which I believe far surpasses that of my clan at large, and make a prediction. It seems likely that the claims made by each of our clans regarding their history and virtue are all true. Oberano, how can that be? Oh, I get what's going on. Once, when I was drinking with Guji Yai, she bet me a round of dried fish that I couldn't guess which cup the umeboshi was under. Whichever one I guessed, I was always wrong, and Guji Yai would lift a different cup to reveal the umeboshi. But then, I learned later from one of the shrine maidens, Miyuki, that all of the cups had an umeboshi under them. <sighs> Just goes to show. I still got a long way to go before I become a great yokai. Oh, don't mind Fox Lady, that's just her way of teasing you. Actually, that reminds me. We can now open these three treasure chests. And unlike the guessing game you mentioned, this one's not a trick. Cool. Well, once you've plundered the last of Boberano's family wealth, we can go to my clan's place. Guess I'll take the clockwork key again then. Yoink! <laughs> The cohort of truth seekers followed Albizzi to his clan's sacred site. They arrived to the site of a giant guard towering over them. Up ahead is my clan's gigantified guard. He can be a little pig-headed and he's incredibly strong. Your weapons won't even scratch him. Wait, but wasn't Cape's clan the one that's all about strength? So, what do you guys believe in then? Oh, the guard is one of Cape's people. Size is a coveted trait in the Clan of Strength, after all. Mine is the Clan of Empathy, and our key contribution is... Growth Serum! What's empathetic about that? Our ancestors believed that, just maybe, the dragon of old didn't mean us any harm at all. Perhaps the dragon simply didn't notice us, since we are so very tiny. So, they drank the growth serum and grew even larger than the dragon. Then, they set the dragon down, calmly explained their perspective, and eventually taught it how to empathize. Uh... The serum isn't what it once was, though. Nowadays, it doesn't make you grow all that much, and it actually makes you lose your empathy. So, I advise we take a detour. Despite Albizzi's words of caution, somebody, no doubt, has other ideas. Surely we could avoid a conflict with the guard, they think to themselves, if we could just try to understand one another. You could, of course, just take the path to your left and go around. But some people are gluttons for punishment. It's all part of the experience, I suppose. Everyone, I have returned! I come with the long-awaited Marquis and their followers to search for the lost origins of our clan. Well, we weren't told anything about that this morning. Get out of here. Leave us alone. <sighs> ah, 
you and Albizzi only wanted to strike up a conversation with the guard. But since greeting you wasn't one of the items included in today's schedule, the relationship quickly soured. If you're just looking for a way in, why not consider taking the path on your left? treating me like a villain. You've been away too long. We all have. Feels like we've been waiting forever. We should be getting close. Why is this place so full of junk? Are you the kind of people who never throw away the box when you buy something because you're worried you won't be able to return it without the original packaging? Uh, we'll never find the Oracle Pillars in all this mess. Never mind that. We have a more pressing issue. It seems there's a slight problem with my clan's family crest. The Marquis may need to utilize their wisdom to solve the issue. Wisdom too, huh? Well, you guys have a bit of everything, don't you? Except empathy. Over here! I found it! Keep the noise down! We don't want to alert the guard. I'll, uh... I'll go keep watch. Can't you destroy the boxes a little more quietly? Apparently that was incorrect. But don't blame yourself, it's Albizzi's clan's fault for taking terrible care of their family crest. How could they let something so important get so dirty? I think it's a little impolite to sneak in without saying hello and decide to introduce yourself. Very courteous of you. Oh no, he's gonna find us! Thank you for being honest and surrendering willingly. Now we will politely escort you out of the restricted area. Now that all the pleasantries are out of the way, time to find a way back in. Thank you for being honest and surrendering willingly. Now we will politely escort you out of the restricted area. This is the last one. The signature. So it's true. Empathy is one of the founding virtues of Constellation Metropole too. Just as we suspected, all three are the truth. Uh, uh okay. Well, this is a lot to process. I, I feel a little empty inside. Yes, we found the truth, but there's too much truth. I get you. It's like in Inazuma, when there were only six books in the Mirage Warrior series, it was really popular. But by the time book number 88 came out, nobody wanted to read it. They all lost interest. A brief moment of joy is drowned out by a growing feeling of melancholy. But perhaps there is a glimmer of hope to be found too? Anyone? Anyone? All right, I'll say it. How is it the case that these three versions of history can all be true at once? That's exactly what Paimon was wondering, but Boborano kind of already explained it away earlier. So Paimon was worried she'd look stupid for asking the question. It's not a stupid question at all, my dear little pixie. While I did postulate that different truths may coexist, there is an issue when it comes to these three truths in particular. 
The problem is, all three truths are the history of the exact same thing, namely the dragon and the Metropole's origins. Yet all three bear the signature, showing that they're genuine. Suddenly, the sound of a bell rings out. The bell! It rang once! What does that mean again? Ah, yes! Highest level of emergency! Everyone, to the main entrance! Stat, bring all the glue traps and place them outside the gates! The whole city is on the lookout and there's only one way out. It's the path right in front of you. Okay, let's get going. The next location on my list is... Why'd they ring the bell anyway? Also, why is one ring the highest level of emergency? Obviously because you have to respond fast when it's an emergency. It'd be a bit too late if they waited till the 99th ring. Suspicious individuals detected! I don't know what law you've broken, but we're currently at the highest level of alert. Come with us. Turn yourselves in. Let's try that again, shall we? Outside! After them! Arrest these suspicious individuals and their associate, Albizzi! You're coming with me! Any further and we'll be outside our jurisdiction. I think we've pursued them far enough to earn a salary from the Empathy Clan. Come on, let's head back. <sighs> we made it out. Don't know if we'll still be needing this clockwork key, but I yoinked it out before we ran, just in case. Okay, but back to the truth problem. There are three conflicting versions of the truth, and somehow they're all still true. What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. I doubt anyone here in Simulanka can make sense of it. All we do know is that any manuscript bearing her signature has to be valid. Well, she is the goddess of fate, the creator of all this, and all these manuscripts are her grand design. The reason we argued about who was right was that we didn't know enough about the truth of the past. But now we have the truth, so we just have to accept it. As surely as we will follow the clockwork path designed for us, so is this the course that history has taken. It is clear and incontrovertible. We will never argue again. Ah, thank you all. Is that all there is to it? Is this where the decision made at the first crossroads of destiny has led us to? A pointlessly happy ending? Huh. Overthinking it would be equally pointless. Well, that's enough for one day. Time to take a break. Could you be any more cryptic? You're planning something. Paimon knows it. Whatever happens, today was a breakthrough in my journey of discovery. I will go back and share it with my clan. Me too. And me. Let's leave it there for today, then. I'm sure we'll find out what else Mr. Narrator has planned for us tomorrow. It's on a beautiful day, thought the Traveler, before he was overcome by a creeping sense of foreboding. The voice in his head grew louder. Must go to Pendulum Lane. Oh my god, this is terrible! I don't understand. The three great clans of Constellation Metropole have finally made peace with each other. Who could have done this? What happened? Oh no, someone's lying on the ground! Cape! How did this happen? Cape, you idiot! Wake up! He 
need to revise your last words or everyone's gonna start suspecting me! Last words? What did he say? Ahem. If I wind up dead one day, the murderer was Boberano. Ugh. You could have at least pretended to not remember it. I'm sorry, Boberano. But this is an interrogation. I have to give the detectives straight answers. Ah, don't worry, Boberano. I don't consider you a suspect, nor do I have the authority to charge anyone with a crime. So are you the last people to have had contact with him? My sincere condolences. You were travel companions, right? It's a real tragedy. I'm afraid he'll be out cold for another hour and a half, at least. Huh? Yeah, I know. It's despicable. Hitting someone in the back of the head is the second worst act of cruelty there is. The first being replacing their gear oil with extra strong glue. So, Cape's not dead? Uh, his gears, metal frame and shell are all still in excellent condition. It's just his uh, energy supply that's been all messed up. Ah, uh, wait. But surely you can't be suggesting that just because Cape isn't broken, there's no need to go looking for the culprit. Unfortunately, this is rapidly turning into a cold case. There's no evidence and no witnesses. Well, unless there's an official clockwork pedestal, the goddess of prophecy around here somewhere. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Then suddenly, the long-lost dragon of old flew across the sky. Where? Where? Uh, I didn't see anything. Wait. Why can't I move? No, oh, my mistake. It was just a cloud. Or a bird. Or something. If only we could turn time backwards and replay the crime. Isn't that one of those, uh, clockwork socket things right behind you? Ah, so it is. No wonder everyone here is suddenly struggling to move. Uh, traveller, if you please, let's uh, recreate the crime scene. I can't make heads or tails of it. <laughs> well, that clears it up. Cape was walking along the street, and he suddenly collapsed. He was faking it. What? So case closed? Aren't you supposed to investigate a little more first? We literally replayed the crime scene and saw it with our own eyes. There's no need for any evidence gathering or powers of deduction now. And besides, maybe the truth is inherently strange by nature. Like how Constellation Metropole has three histories, each of which is the truth. But didn't you say Cape was struck in the back of the head and knocked unconscious? For all I know, he could have bashed his head against the toilet bowl before leaving the house, then walked here in a daze before finally passing out. As for why he might have done that, my guess is... Is... With the Supreme Clan question left unanswered and the tension in Constellation Metropole suddenly wiped away, he was looking to create a new source of conflict. Only then... Would the city feel alive again? Uh, do we really think he's capable of that, though? Sounds like a pretty complicated conspiracy for the average Simulanka resident. Traveler, something about the crime scene isn't sitting right with me. It just seems unnatural. Also, anything outside of the immediate area won't have appeared in the replay. Is it possible that something was missing from the scene? Why don't we search the area? Wait, what are you doing? Oh, we're... Uh, we're gonna head to Cape's house to check the toilet bowl for signs of an impact. A pickaxe? What is it doing all the way down here? There's gotta be a story behind it. Let's take it. 
Uh, hello there. Uh, have you seen my spear by any chance? Someone was shouting about a dragon a minute ago, and I instinctively threw it into the sky. Yeah. There's a spear here. It looks so mysterious. Let's take it. Hey, you're, uh, you're not from these parts, are you? Just visiting? Yep, that's right. Why? What's up? Ah, well, I was going to offer you a great job in the Titanium Mines. A safe and secure working environment. Uh, doesn't sound very safe. Uh, at least not as safe as being a courier. To keep the Titanium ore intact, we use specially designed pickaxes that can't cut through it. Even if you struck a person with it, it wouldn't so much as leave a scratch. And in terms of labor intensity, the work has been rated as Class 2 physical labor by a reputable organization. Even cats can do it. I'm not... A... Ugh, never mind. I give up. Welcome to Paimon's world. Mind you, I don't know what happened today, but somehow a pickaxe has gone missing. Maybe one of the giant guards broke it down, so someone took it to perform a rapid resuscitation procedure. Sounds pretty brutal for a first aid technique. Still, a missing pickaxe. Huh. Is it just me, Traveler, or does it seem kinda suspicious? <sighs> come here. Whatever it is you were looking to buy, please do come back tomorrow. It's just... I have to close early today. A bottle of growth serum has gone missing. If someone's stolen it with the intention of harming others, the consequences could be disastrous. There's a whole investigation into it, so I gotta close the shop while I do an inventory count. If it turns out I'm wrong and I miscounted, I could be charged with filing a false report and disturbing the peace. There's a strange potion bottle here. It looks so weird. Let's take it. Let's say one of these was the weapon used in the assault. Which one do you think it is? If it was the growth serum, Cape would have been turned into a giant. Also, the bottle probably would have shattered when it hit him. We would have seen the debris on the ground. Let's say one of these was the weapon used in the assault. Which one do you think it is? If so, there's no way his head would still be in such good shape. He'd have a big dent in the back. And if the guard is to be believed, he had the spear in his possession right up until that guy shouted about the dragon. Let's say one of these was the weapon used in the assault. Which one do you think it is? If it was the pickaxe, Cape sure is lucky it's not still lodged in his head. Actually, you're wrong there, Paimon. The foreman at the mine was just saying, this kind of pickaxe is designed not to damage titanium, so it couldn't cause any superficial damage to residents here. But you could probably knock someone out if you hit them hard enough, and it wouldn't leave a scratch. Let's take this back to the crime scene and replay it one more time. Ah, oh, you're back. That was a toilet at Cape's house. Toilet? What about it? Oh, oh, yeah, um, forget that. What's this about? What are you trying to say? We thought the way Cape fell looked odd, so we searched the area for suspicious items and found this. It could have been deliberately placed out of range of the crime scene so it wouldn't show up when we replayed it. Now we've retrieved it, we were gonna replay it again. You don't mind, do you? Oh, uh... I just remembered I forgot to turn off the clockwork switch in my kitchen. Yeah, I think I'll just, uh... Oh, no, you stay right there. Uh... We should be good now.
the attacker! So, it was you! <laughs> uh, I will congratulate you for cracking the case, but since I did such an abysmal job of covering my tracks, didn't exactly have your work cut out for you. So, all I can say is... Is... Catch me if you can! The would-be Marquis of Carabas dispatched the Necomata in boots who ran off in pursuit of the poor little minion. The minion's poor little lower back was protesting painfully against the intense physical activity. He decided to take the Ecomata, giving him a moment to catch his breath. Really? His lower back asked. But the minion had no other choice. He resolved to make the jump down. By this point, the Necomata in boots was gasping for air. The minion was huffing and puffing even more loudly. But uh, we'll ignore that. I'm not! Don't underestimate the gold level courier of the Comania Express! A characteristically catty response from the Neko Mata. Tell me, what do you hope to gain from bullying me? I get to let off some steam! Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 you fell into my trap! Oh, and uh, by the way, remember the uh, glue you got stuck on when you first entered the future Marquis about to be? That was also me. I did it using my powers. You guys right now, you can just jump out of your shoes and keep running, but I... I'm wearing boots this time. Yes! The unnamed minion made a last-ditch escape attempt. He began his long, cruel, long, long crime, climb, sorry, up the wall, the, the tall, the tall wall. He began his long climb up the tall wall. Can you call that a tall wall? In urgent Neko parcel mode, I'll scale it in no time. Climb. Sorry. <laughs> Up the wall. The, the tall... The tall wall. He began his long climb up the tall wall. Can you call that a tall wall? In urgent Neko parcel mode... <sighs> I'm beat. I surrender. You've got nowhere left to run. All right. I confess. That was fast. Getting caught by you here was a backup plan. I don't know if what I've done will make things better or not. Time to come clean. <sighs> I am the narrator. The one who's been guiding you all this time. You're overdoing it a little bit there. Anyway, I only did what I did because... Why are you suddenly spilling the beans? I poured my heart and soul into all this. I was worried you wouldn't ask. The truth is, I was one of the first conscious beings ever made by the goddess of creation, and I've known for a long time that this whole world is just a fairy tale written by the goddess of fate. I know they say that fairy tales are just made up for kids to read, but I refuse to believe that fairy tales are just fictional stories and nothing more. The reason why Constellation Metropole has three origin stories is that the Goddess of Fate wrote three drafts and couldn't decide which one she liked best. Then her cat trod all over them and they all got crumpled together, so the three worlds just sort of folded into one. The Goddess of Fate was torn between them anyway, since she couldn't decide which ending was best for the dragon or the kids. So when she saw what the cat had done, she simply decided to go with all three. Who'd have thought? to do with what you did. You're not a fictional character, so you couldn't hope to understand my sorrow. Honestly, I don't think there's anyone in all of Simulanka who would understand. Every day that I experience, 
every interaction I have with another person, is it really all just a work of fiction? The only reason the three great clans wanted to find out the truth was for the pointless task of electing the Supreme Clan. I thought that once they'd learned the truth, it might make them curious enough to investigate further. But as it turned out, they just accepted it and carried on living the same old lives. I have to motivate them to keep looking for answers now that they think they've learned the truth. I have to make them uncomfortable with the superficial explanation that they took at face value. And I have to figure out, once and for all, while you real people from the outside world are still here, are we real? Aww. That's my full confession. Time for you to take me back. I'm guessing I'll probably be forced to make a public apology, then sentenced to half a day in solitary confinement. I definitely deserve half a day. Oh, also, pass this message on to Cape, Boberano, and Albizzi, if you could. The Great Clockwork Key was originally put in place jointly by the ancestors of the three clans. If the three of them had any ability to cooperate whatsoever, they'd have been able to remove it by themselves. Over all these years, not once have they ever tried removing it together. Oh, my poor child. There's one thing you've been mistaken about this whole time. Ah! Whose voice is that? D detective Was that you? Your voice acting's actually pretty good. The reason fairy tales are suitable for children is that they help them to understand the world. Fairy tales may be works of fiction, but at their heart lies an internal logic that is undoubtedly real-world truth in a condensed form. Perhaps they simplify good and evil, and perhaps they hide the darkness in metaphors. But let there be no doubt. The world within fairy tales is as real as can be. And by extension, you and your compatriots are also real. Goddess! Is it really you? The line that separates footnotes from narrative can never be crossed. Never the two shall meet. This is why you have never heard my voice before. But now you wish to break free from the story, and there's a cat nearby so you can hear my echo. Echo Mora! Just... your echo? Oh, poor detective. So... We are a part of the real world, too. Spinning. Albizzi just gave me a quick rundown of the situation. So you caught the detective? Sorta. We chased him until he surrendered. Oh, and he asked us to pass on a message. Does he really think we didn't try that? Cause we did! After six months in that place! Ah, that was my bad. I thought it was a stupid idea at the time, so I didn't really exert myself. I, uh... I also sort of stopped trying after three years. What are you... <sighs> Never mind. I'm partly to blame as well. On the second attempt, I just hugged the key and pretended like I was pulling as hard as I could. Uh, you guys are so lazy. My granny's neighbor's pet cat has nothing on you, and it spends all day, every day, sunbathing. Anyway, you said you heard the voice of the goddess of fate at the end? That's amazing. There is a world beyond our own, after all. What would you guys say to taking a trip to the outside world sometime? 
Otherwise, I got bashed in the back of the head for nothing. Depends. Do either of you know how to get there? But yes, I agree we should go. And not invite the detective. Just to annoy him. But maybe the reason we've never worried about whether we're real or not is that, unlike him, we weren't there to witness the creation of this world. We've never had any reason to doubt that we're real. If someone ever convinced me that these delightful dimwits, Cape and Albizzi weren't real, oh, I'd be devastated. again. <laughs> Pretty amazing, right? I never thought I'd be able to keep this outfit in the real world. I really like the texture, too. It feels so nice against my skin. Still, not the best thing to wear when I'm out on a delivery. Something about running around carrying a parcel when I'm dressed like this seems to make everyone suspicious. Especially the guards, the Millilith, and so on. They always stop me and interrogate me on the spot. <sighs> Guess I'll just have to switch back to my old outfit when I'm on the job. Oh, it was fantastic! A magical world full of things I'd never seen before. Great scenery, really friendly people. Oh, and I also took a trip back to the Forest of Blessings after we parted ways. Grandpa Almond introduced me to everyone in the forest and reassured them that I wouldn't scratch anything. I made sure to fully retract my claws while I was there. I didn't want to find out how they'd react to seeing them. <laughs> With this adventure under my belt, I can turn the tables on my grandma. It's my turn to tell her some stories. After Peace returned to Simulanka, a lot of people started saying they wanted to pay a visit to the world beyond. But they're a little worried about whether it's safe or not. If any of them do visit to that, I'd love to be their guide. I could even use my delivery box to take them around. If anyone understands the joy of seeing new things, it's me. Sure thing. It's always a pleasure adventuring with you guys. I had so much fun. <clears throat> Oz! Uh, though I customarily refer to you as my familiar, in truth, I... I've always seen you as... Say no more, main Fräulein. I, Osvaldo Horafnavines, hereby pledge to always stay by your side. Hmm. <laughs> Quite rightly so. The Princessin should expect no less from her most favored Nachtrabin. I couldn't agree more, main Fräulein. Wow. What a gorgeous lotus stage. Fit for the forest fairy herself, after all. Hmm. A wonderful sight indeed. But, uh, Madam Fairy, I believe the dog over there has been staring at us for quite a while. Ah, that swath. Don't worry, he's a good dog. He doesn't bite. That's a good boy. I haven't seen you in ages, Swoof. No eating the frogs and hamsters here, okay? No eating! Ah! <laughs> what a, what a well-behaved doggy. <laughs> you see, Stream? I told you, didn't I? The outside world isn't nearly as dangerous as we feared. Mm-hmm. You were right. But with that said, Grandpa Almond, why are you hiding behind me? 